Hello friends, question for you tonight. Do you wrestle with your past, with the things that you have done wrong, maybe even something you did just yesterday? Well, if so, I pray that today's devotion will speak to you and speak to your heart and let you know that God still forgives. My name is Gerald, so glad to have you along for our daily devotion, again from Version called good news for a encouragement for a world in crisis today is day four and the title of today is god forgives us do you ever get so frustrated with yourself for saying or doing something you know you shouldn't have what about the thoughts you let go through your mind about other people every single day and often many times a day we act in ways we know aren't honoring god our humanity is just so human, isn't it? Whether we understand what we're doing or not, God gives grace to us. His perfect, unmerited favor covers a multitude of sins and is available to us 24 hours a day, every day, for every week. The Bible is full of people who understood the powerful grace of God in their lives. Let's hear two stories. Saul and Paul. According to himself, Saul was a Pharisee of all Pharisees. If anyone had the right resume with numerous accolades, it was him. He stood for what was right and even stood by watching Christians be murdered. He was determined to rid the world of Christianity, but then he met Jesus, literally, and he was radically changed. Saul renamed Paul became the most influential leader in the early church and authored 13 of the 27 New Testament books. And then we also have Peter. When referring to the 12 disciples of Jesus, Peter is almost always mentioned first. His leadership was evident and he's known for being outspoken. So much so that when Jesus told the group that they would all desert him, Peter was adamant that he would never do that. Yet after Jesus was arrested, Peter was confronted and denied that he knew Jesus not once, but three times. When Jesus came back from the dead, he forgave Peter and restored him to ministry. Peter went on to be one of the most influential leaders in the early church. Paul didn't know what he was doing until he knew what he was doing. He genuinely didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah and felt justified in his Jewish faith by attempting to rid the world of a supposed con artist. Peter, on the other hand, had been with Jesus, and many would say he knew better. He even proclaimed that he was the last person to ever leave Jesus, or that he would be the last person to ever leave Jesus. Two very different scenarios covered by the same grace and forgiveness of God. We all sin and do the unthinkable. But God's grace lavishes us with forgiveness. So no matter how far you've strayed, how corrupt you've been, or who you've hurt, God's forgiveness is a simple prayer away. And in addition to having our sins forgiven, God won't waste our painful or experiences. We get to see those hard situations we walk through become stories of God's glory. He uses the most unlikely people to be vessels of hope on this earth are you willing to be an avenue of hope to someone who needs jesus our scripture comes to us from matthew chapter 26 beginning in verse 69 now peter was sitting outside in the courtyard and a servant girl came up to him and said you also were with jesus the galilean but he denied it before them all saying i do not know what you mean and when he went out of the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you too are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed, and Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly.
First Peter chapter one, or excuse me, First Peter chapter four, verse eight. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sin. So, for many of us in our Christian lives, we wrestle with God's forgiveness. It seems too easy, and we seem too evil. And many people won't even come to Christ, won't even trust in him and his forgiveness because they feel that they are too far away, that you've done too much wrong for God to ever forgive you. But friends, we see from these two examples in God's word that you cannot go too far from God for him to restore you. You can't go too far or sin against him too much for him to forgive you. His forgiveness, His grace, His mercy is free. We just have to ask. And then with that, our hearts can be transformed. We can receive His forgiveness. And then we can do our best to leave our lives of sin. But we're still going to sin every day, most likely. But the goal is to do better today than I did yesterday. Not because it will earn me righteousness. Not because it will earn God's love or his favor. But because I love him. And because I want to do better for him. And then also remember your story. Remember your failings and how God has redeemed you and forgiven you of them. Many of us have a past that he has rescued us from. And when we share our story, many times God uses our story to help rescue someone else from the same mire and depth that we were in. So I always encourage each of us, tell your story, tell what God has done for you so that others may see that he can do the same for them. Friends, I pray this has given you hope, helped you to receive forgiveness. And if there's any way we can pray to help you as you wrestle with forgiveness or past sin, leave us a comment, shoot us a message. We would love to pray for you. And do us a favor and share this message with others so that they too may hear it and they too may be receivers of God's grace as well. Until we come together tomorrow, have a blessed evening, friends.